This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I get nano meshes to fill the entire polygon? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I have the Earthquake model here loaded in. Now I've gone through and deleted Earthquake's higher subdivision levels, and also removed his polypaint, so I'm just left with this low resolution version of Earthquake here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over to my brush palette over here and I'm going to select the IMM model kit brush. And with this brush selected, I now just want to turn this into a nano mesh brush. So I'm going to navigate to the brush palette up here. I'm going to locate the create nano mesh brush button and click that. And this is going to take that IMM brush and convert it to a new Z modeler brush with those nano meshes. So you can see now I have a new Z modeler brush, and if I press M on my keyboard, you'll see that it has all those insert meshes that can now be used with nano mesh. So I'm just going to come through and select this panels 15 object here. And now I'm going to come across any polygon on Earthquake here, and I'm just going to click and drag. And while I'm dragging this out, I'm going to hold down shift. When you hold down shift, it's going to use the existing poly group that is on that poly, and it's going to apply the nano mesh to all polygons that have that same poly group. So since Earthquake here contained one single poly group, so you can see that the nano mesh has been applied to every single polygon across Earthquake. Now the question is asking how I can take this nano mesh and now fill it to the polygon it's attached to. So since this shape was horizontal, you can see it's not filling the entire polygon. So I'm left with a gap at the bottom and a gap at the top. So if we come over here to the tool palette and we go to the nano mesh tab here, there's a few options here that you can change that controls how the nano mesh is going to be applied to this polygon. So right now this is set to proportional mode up here. And proportional mode is going to keep the nano mesh's size consistent across all the polygons where it's applied to. So as you can see, this nano mesh here is the same size as the nano mesh is applied to his head, applied to his arm. It's all the same size across the entire model. So even if the polygon size is tiny, it's going to apply that same size nano mesh everywhere. So this is why we're getting this kind of garbled effect on Earthquake's face here. And then we have really sparse areas on Earthquake's stomach. So directly beside this proportional button, there is a fit button. And then next to that, there is a fill button. So if we click fit, you're going to notice that this looks a little bit more to what we want. So it's coming through and it's taking all these nano meshes and it's fitting it to each polygon. Now when you use the fit process, it's going to keep the same proportional information for that insert mesh and just fit it in the longest dimension. So since these shapes were rectangular in nature, it's going to take the longest dimension of that nano mesh and fit it to the polygon. Right now you notice I still have a little gapping around the edges here. And this is because my size is not fully set to one, and I also have some rotational information down here. So I wanna take this size here and set this to one. So just click that, hit enter, and then I wanna zero out the Z rotation. So now each of those nano meshes should be fully fitting in the longest dimension to each polygon. Now if we want this to fill each polygon rather than just fit, we can come over here and select this fill option. And this is going to take that nano mesh and it's going to distort it till it fills the polygon it's attached to. So you can see now each of these nano meshes are now filling the entire polygon they're connected to. And even if you have a triangle area on your model like here, you'll see it has filled that triangle on the mesh here with that nano mesh as well. So it's going to look at all the surfaces that the nano mesh is applied to and fill it to that polygon. So you're going to get larger ones here and smaller ones across his face. So that is the process of getting a nano mesh to fill to an entire polygon. Make sure you have fill selected underneath the nano mesh tab here. Make sure your size is set to one and then zero out any rotational information. Now one more thing, you will also notice that right now in Earthquake, all these nano meshes are going in different directions. And this is because the alignment is based on the vertex order for each polygon. So if you want to change this as well, just come to your nano mesh tab here, and down at the bottom there's this alignment tab. And in here you have a bunch of different options you can cycle through that is going to change how the nano meshes are aligned to the model. You can just come through and cycle through these until you get a result 
that's more of what you're looking for. Now, if you want to even configure this a little bit more, you can select the option of no alignment, and then we can go up to the geometry tab here. We can go to this modify topology area, and here you have a spin edge and a line edge set of buttons. And these are gonna come through and spin those edges. So if we come over here and click align, it's going to try to align everything in one direction on your model. And then if you click spin, it's going to spin the direction on your model. So you can use these options too with the nano mesh set to no alignment to adjust how those nano meshes are being applied to the surface. So the fill will also work with any nano mesh. So if I hit M again and come through and select another nano mesh here. So let's select this panels 08. And I'm just going to go to the nano mesh tab, go to inventory and do replace nano mesh from current brush. And that's going to replace it with the current nano mesh I've selected. And now I'm going to get this result on Earthquake. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.